Hi, my name is Brad Frieden. I'm a product marketing engineer at Keysight Technologies. This video is of a series of videos that will highlight the ways that Infinium oscilloscopes can be used in a variety of RF measurements. In this video, we're going to take a number of measurements on an RF pulse train and do analysis in the frequency domain. We're going to take advantage of segmented memory where I have captured 16,000 of these pulses and put them into memory, into segments, and then I'm going to apply frequency domain analysis on those saved pulses. We're going to look at things like the FFT and consider ways that we can analyze if this pulse train is behaving the way that we're expecting. We're using the S-Series oscilloscope. It has 8 gigahertz bandwidth. And it has a redesigned time base and front end so that it has very flat amplitude and phase response, as well as very low close in phase noise. Uh, those all are very important for making these kinds of RF measurements. We're now looking at the capture of this RF pulse train. We've used segmented memory, so if I press this run button, now the oscilloscope is walking through each one of these segments where a pulse has been captured and we can now do frequency domain measurements on these uh, segmented captures. So uh, we go into math, functions, I'll define a first math function called FFT and turn it on. I'm going to do one more thing under the uh, math function, I'm going to change the window to be a rectangular window. That's the optimal for a wide bandwidth signal. Now we're able from these many segments coming through and each one being processed with an FFT see the spectral content on that RF pulse train and it's going from 1 gigahertz to 3 gigahertz um, as I would have expected. I can use gated FFTs to look inside of the pulse and then analyze in frequency domain that portion of the pulse. Let's take a look at doing that. Back on the oscilloscope, we'll define another math function called gate. We'll turn that on. And now I have a little time gate riding on my RF pulses that I can move across the pulse and do analysis. I could have also, if I had multiple pulses on screen, gated those individual pulses and done FFTs on them. In this case, at the beginning of the pulse, I want to do an FFT of just the signal that's coming in the time gate. So I say math functions define a third function, which is again an FFT, but this time on that function of the time gate. And if I turn that on, I get another FFT. Now, since I'm looking at a narrow kind of frequency here, the more optimal kind of FFT for that is going to have a Hanning window. And now I can see a pulse here. I can say mark peaks, and it tells me that I have a peak at 1 gigahertz. And that's what I would have expected if this is chirping from 1 to 3 across the pulse. And if it's linear, I would expect if I got halfway through it, I'd be up to around 2 gigahertz. So if we open our gate up a little bit and look at the FFT, sure enough, it is at around 2 gigahertz. And finally, across the pulse toward the end, I should have made it all the way up to 3 gigahertz. And if I open my gate up a little bit, look at the measurement here, I'm seeing the peak is at 3 gigahertz. So we've confirmed with a few points across the pulse, it's linearly increasing in frequency uh, as a function of the pulse width. We've seen how the S-Series oscilloscope with its 8 gigahertz bandwidth and linear magnitude and phase response has been able to make some important frequency domain measurements on an RF pulse train. There are also models 
of oscilloscopes that go beyond the 8 gigahertz bandwidth if your signals have frequency content in those regions. The 90,000 X series go up to 32 gigahertz and the Z series go all the way out to 63 gigahertz. So depending on the carrier frequency you have and the kind of modulation and how wide it is uh, allows you to choose uh, the right type of oscilloscope. I hope some of these measurements uh, have been helpful to you to see some of the ways that you could apply them in your own application. And if you'd like to learn more about these, go to the URL on your screen. And thanks for watching.